regenerative medicine happens to be, you know, a relatively new field of medicine that has been in existence now for over 20 years. And it is the process of replacing or regenerating the human cells or tissues to restore or establish normal function state. So um, this also comprise, uh, before I go into that, I like to mention the way Mayo Clinic defines regenerative medicine. They said it is a game changing area of medicine that has potential to fully heal damaged tissues. But the interesting part is it is offering solutions and hope for people who have conditions that today are beyond repair. Mind you, regenerative medicine is not the answer to everything, but most uh, conditions that Dr. Doc said, there's something we can do. Regenerative medicine says there may be hope. And regenerative medicine comprises of platelet-rich plasma, which I'm going to be referring to as PRP, and that is when you use your own blood. There's also exosomes. These are tiny particles. We get it from umbilical cord, placenta, or bone marrow. And of course, the popular part of it is the stem cell therapy. The stem cell therapy um, is in, um, divided into three sections, embryonic, induced prepotent, and adult stem cell therapy. I will start with embryonic stem cells. This has some uh, controversial issues. Why? Because it involves the use of embryos, which are potential human beings, and most of the embryos are donated uh, by the IVF clinics. So some religious groups are against it, some countries are against it, because you are using potential human beings. The, uh, the number two of the three types of the stem cell is induced pluripotent stem cells. This is when you, the, the scientists start reprogramming uh, the adult cells to express characteristics that are similar to embryonic stem cells. And this is in research state. Um, this involves manipulating the cells, culture expanding it, um, and reprogramming it. It can take anywhere from six weeks to 12 weeks uh, from taking the cells, manipulating it, to the time it is ready to give to the patient before it is transplanted to the patient. So this is still in research state. Uh, what I do, uh, sorry, um, what I do is adult stem cell therapy. That's one that is clinically safe. It is the same day procedure. I don't expand, culture, reprogram. What I get is what I give back to the patient. And the word adult is not about age. It is about you know fully formed uh, uh, human. That is why umbilical cord stem cell is under uh, adult stem cell and, and therapy. So we're going to be talking about three things this evening. The first one is beta rich plasma, then exosomes, then other stem cell therapy. I will share some testimonia under each of these sections, and after that we go into question and answers. So platelet-rich plasma therapy, also known as PRP. That is when you draw the patient's blood, we process it, we spin it, we get the yellow section called plasma, we get a section of that that is very rich in uh, growth factors, um, very rich in platelets, and those platelets contain growth factors and cytokines, we inject it to where we need it, and then the tissue in that area multiplies, they regenerate, and then we get healthy tissue that is permanent, and it's widely used in USA, and it's very popular to now in uh, Nigeria. You can use it for cosmetic reasons, like uh, get rid of uh, wrinkles on the face, looking younger, sexual function in women, it works very, very well, even better, faster in women than men's erectile uh, um, dysfunction. That is all short. Most women don't just need only one treatment session, Men may need more than one treatment section. It can be used for uh, growing your hair, a uh, wound that will not heal, or pain in, in germs. Like uh, you can see the right corner there is uh, Kim Kardashian when she had vampire fascia or PRP fascia. Um, you can see how it's injected into the scalp, into the joints. All these are evidence-based medicine. 
um, some some of your physicians may not know about this. They might tell you, oh, it is in research stage. Oh, it is not yet available. I already explained to you that there are different types. Some are available clinically, some are in research stage, and you can read more about it on the US um, website, National Institute of Health. Uh, this is a patient that treated in Nigeria uh, about um, three years ago. The wound will not heal for one year. I used the patient's blood and the stem cell from his fat, and that is all I did. No special dressing, no special turning. You can see within six days, uh, there's improvement. It's already, you know, uh, healing. By day 65, you know, it has uh, healed. I wrote an article about it. I submitted it. It was accepted in, uh, into the Journal of Medical Cases. It was published in uh, 2018. And then that's my name highlighted in yellow. You can use it for acne, like you've seen this lady. You can use it for yay cold style, you know, um, or whatever the reason is why the woman is losing their hair, you know. Um, you can use it also in men. You can use it for joint pain. And actually, this is a 7 year lady that I treated um, over four years ago. Uh, she came to me in wheelchair, and then within three months, when I went back to Nigeria, because I grew every three, three months, the lady that came in wheelchair walked to the clinic did not use a walker, did not use a cane, and you know, she walked herself. And then, you know, this is a testimonial from one of the children who sent me a text that how they appreciated um, the change in their mother. It can also be used for sexual function, uh, like premature ejac ejaculation. Um, this is a gentleman who did not tell his wife, but he responded that things are getting better. And uh, let me see, uh, you know, he said, Things are getting better. He couldn't talk because his wife, uh, uh, you know, was around. Then even after that testimonial, about um, seven months later, he texted me from nowhere that, um, you know, uh, he's happy, you know, and enjoying his um, and, um, relationship with his wife in the bedroom. And this is a patient with testicular pain and also testicular atrophy, um, the left uh, testicles uh, was small, strong. You can see, you can see that actually down here, you can see the, the right, and then this is the left, and this is also the left. And then about one and a half years later, you can see how the left has increased in, uh, in size and almost the same thing, you know, with uh, the right testicles. And of course the testicular pain, you know, um, went away. That is all about PRP. And then before I go further, PRP therapy is for anything that you can touch, um, whether it's your knee, your joint, your head, your face, whereas exosomes and stem cell is for both areas you can touch and areas that you cannot touch. For example, you cannot touch your lungs. So if somebody has a lung problem, you can use, uh, you, you, cannot, you cannot use PRP. You have to use uh, exosome for stem cells. If it's um, your brain, you can't touch it. So for you to have an idea of what you can use for what. Okay. Exosomes are nano-sized vesicles. You know, they are very small, smaller than viruses. You know, they are a section of the cells that have been secreted and they contain uh, the messages. Uh, that is the mRNA, messenger RNA. The exosome do not contain any DNA. The DNA inside the nucleus. So with this messenger RNA that carries all the information needed to where you put them, they tell the area to start repairing, regenerating. So, so that is how uh, uh, they work. And you can, you can get them from placenta, you can get them from bone marrow. This is somebody that had a second degree skin bone, although it looks um, a light skin, but he has skin type C, which is the same thing we in Africa, our skin type is type six. You cannot have a second degree bone and not be left with scar. You can see for yourself, there's no scarring, you know, there's no abnormal pigmentation by 30 days after the 
treatment with uh, exosomes. This is another uh, uh, injury treated with uh, exosomes. Uh, you can see the perforation of the left ear drum with cutting board accidentally down here. You can see the injury, you know, the injury that was done. And then the treatment was done within three days of the of the injury. Normally it takes up to six months, on average maybe three, four to heal. This uh, injury closed in three weeks. The video uh, autoscope was done four weeks later. But clinically, the stopping of the drainage from the hair uh, all stopped in three weeks. And then about 11 months later, you can see how clear you know, the, the hair drum is. So the left side is before the treatment, after the injury, on the left upper corner of your screen. Three, four weeks later is the left lower corner of the screen. Now, on the right side of the screen, you can see how everything healed back to normal. The ear, uh, uh, the ear uh, sorry, yeah, the membrane in the in the hair um, is very transparent. There is no scar. There is no uh, sign of any uh, trauma. So that's the power of regenerative uh, medicine. Exosome has also been used in some people with diabetics. Uh, one of my patients in Abuja was treated in uh, October 2018. Uh, two months later, the hemoglobin one c dropped from 10.5 to um, 6.52, you know. Exo the, uh, uh, another type of exosome is also being used currently to treat um, COVID-19. In USA, um, there's one particular exosome um, that is already in uh, phase three uh, trial, and that uh, cure people that have COVID-19 on ventilator that uh, probably would have died without the exosome. So um, that is something that will also become available uh, in Nigeria uh, soon, once um, we have the clearance from FDA here and then uh, NAVDA. Uh, so there's a lot that regenerative medicine can uh, uh, offer. This uh, is a patient that um, the, the mother uh, brought uh, this three and a half year old boy to me in March, uh, uh, um, to me to treat on March 25, uh, 2021 this year. So 16 days later, I followed up to find out how they are doing. So I'm not sure depending on whether you're using your phone or laptop, I'm going to read, you know, the the response from the mother when I asked for an update, you know. He said, since, you know, the son got his treatment that uh, I noticed changes in his behavior. So she went for that to text. I read, he is more calm and willing to listen. He is better with his emotions now. He hugs his little brother good morning. He has never done that. His speech therapist said he has better understanding and he is trying to make sounds that sounded like words. He was able to match puzzles all by himself without any help. I hope to see more progress. Um, we are definitely coming back for, for more. You know. Oh, by the way, I also treated the mother um, with PRP um, with, for O short simply because you know, um, autism, autistic child is not an easy one to take care of. So she has lost interest, um, you know, in sexual relationship with her partner, with her husband. Um, so she complained to me, she found out about uh, O-Short. So since she flew down uh, from under state, we decided to treat her. And then she said that about the O-Short, I noticed more lubrication. 
and no more pain with sex. I now have urge and desire to have sex. The orgasm is more intense too. I feel less stress. Thank you very much. So um, this just to tell you that if there's anybody that is on listening and they have issues, they can't even tell their husband why, what is going on, uh, OSHA therapy uh, may help. Now, using exosomes for this autistic child, three and a half years old, that we've been talking about, uh, there's a continual improvement. So what happened was that I sent a text yesterday, May 8th, to find out uh, if there's any further improvement. If you pay attention, the time there is 4.40 p.m. U.S. time. And down here is 11.18 p.m. when she responded. And I'm going to uh, read um, the important part. So this section here from green to here, green is what I'm going to be reading. And I think it's more visible on the right side of the screen because I kind of type it out, you know. So the response is that, is this what she typed. I am glad to see him make so much progress. Though he is not there yet, but I am happy with the result, period. I noticed he is trying to say some words, though it does not come out right, but at least he is trying. That he does not do before. Now he can pronounce at least 15 alphabet sounds, and something that sounds like bread, shoe, yellow, green, red, blue. Before, you can never get, you know, his name is out, you can never get him to repeat or pronounce anything. So within one and a half months, in a child that has been stressed in mother half, I believe this is why Mayor Clinton said that regenerative medicine is the field of medicine that is giving hope for, con for conditions that orthodox medicine says, sorry, just deal with it. So that's a, a great improvement. Now, the last part of the presentation, adult stem cell therapy. And um, I will try, I think there's a lot of information that this section, I will try and move fast, you know, so that we can get to question and uh, answer. First of all, we need to understand this slide about stem cells. If there's anything you're going to remember, if it's just this slide, then you know about stem cells. Stem cell is a cell that can multiply, renew itself, and at one point can differentiate into matured cells. That is the basic understanding of stem cell. That is why all of us online, listening and me talking, we all came from one stem cell, sperm and ovum. The sperm fertilized, the ovum, then from that complete cell, we are creating. So stem cell can differentiate into you know, any organ, which we already know anyway. We already know about this before. You know, um, there are three types. Only adult stem cell is clinically safe. That's the only one that I'm involved with. That's the only one that uh, we're going to be talking about. And it is um, outpatient. Um, I don't coach, I don't uh, manipulate the stem cells. You can get this stem cell from the bone marrow. You can get it from the fat in the stomach. And you can also get it from umbilical cord. That is why in Western world, any newly born baby, um, they collect the sample of the umbilical cord. They ask the mother for the permission so that 25, 30 years later, if there's a problem, with that child, you can use that um, uh, child's own um, umbilical cord blood. Then, and this time you have to culture expand it. Then you, you know, you have to uh, multiply it so that you can reuse it. Otherwise, if any of us listening wants umbilical cord blood, you can either get it from a relative, you know, who is uh, about to give birth, or you get it from ready-made. Uh, 
and you get a ready-made umbilical cord stem cells. They are companies, FDA, FDA approved uh, tissue banks in America that collect umbilical cord blood, test the mother, test the blood, and then have it ready for anybody that needs it. And mind you, you do not need to do blood group typing. You don't need to cross match. As an adult, for me to give you my blood, I have to make it that we are compatible. With umbilical cord stem cells, you don't. They are primitive, they do not trigger any immune reaction, and therefore anybody can take it without needing any um, blood type or cross matching. So, how do these stem cells work? I know you're wondering, okay, you can do this, you can do that. How do they work? Yes, it's not very complex. When you transplant the stem cells into the body, they flow around, they go from head to toe, anywhere blood supply reaches, and if they identify any area of damage, injury in the body, they tell that part of your body to start repairing itself. So that's why they call it paracrine effect, cell to cell communication. So they create an environment that will now make the damage or the dying cells to, you know, to survive. So they kind of help the body to revive and stop the cell from dying. They are also very good in modulating our immune system. That is why they are good for COVID-19. Well, because COVID-19 uh, virus triggered the body to cause some uh, blood clotting process and uh, the body attack itself. The immune system, uh, the immune system become messed up, but um, exosomes or medical cord stem cells will turn around, modulate the immune system, regulate it, and then that's why people are able to come off the ventilators. And also, I know I mentioned exosomes before, but FDA2 has also approved um, umbilical cord stem cells to be used in treatment of um, COVID-19. But this is still in clinical trials. So they approve the, the research to be done because of the potential benefit. So some, it's not something you can just you know, get. Of course, if you are getting umbilical cord stem cells, yes, it boosts your immune system. But we cannot, quote unquote, say that we are treating COVID yet until the FDA you know, gives it final approval. Although it's just giving final approval, the process is still the same, you know. It's still the same exosomes or umbilical cord that they are using. You know. Oh, this release, they also use the, um, you know, stem cell. Um, and uh, that was in April 2020, this was published, April last year. And uh, they had a 100% success rate, you know. In all their uh, six critically ill patients um, that's, well, uh, they were sick because of um, COVID-19. All of them survived. So that's the power of uh, regenerative medicine. Now, some of you might have heard the word of autologous and allogenic. Autologous simply means something taken from you and giving back to you, from you to you. It is the safest form of transplantation. And uh, the Jehovah Witness, the that they don't take blood from anybody, they use their own blood anyway. So the risk of rejection is uh, zero. But not all conditions can be treated with an uh, autologous specimen. For example, sickle cell disease, you cannot use your own stem cells or bone marrow or umbilical cord. You have to find um, a donor or leukemia. So in that case, when you are getting from someone else, and it's not yours, it is allogenic. Of course, you know, compatibility has to be also you know, addressed. So how do we get the fat? Uh, people are wondering, you know, is, is it safe? Um, you know, I, we, I do the harvesting by you know, in the area, collect the fat that I need. The patient is awake. I don't like putting patient to sleep, except if they are uh, children. 
for example, um, one of uh, when we were doing the one of Nigerian governors key that are treated for cerebral palsy, we have to put him to sleep. He's nine year old. You do not want to traumatize or a kid remembering what you're doing. But for adults, you are awake uh, with charts, uh, no intubation, so the risk of oh, will I survive all those things? We take care of those fear or those phobia. Okay, so and um, it's just one hour, and I'm done. The main work is in the processing of the stem cells. It can take up to six hours harvesting the stem cells, whether it is single or double or triple dose, depending on how many areas of the body you want the stem cell to reach or multiple medical conditions that you may have, that may require that you do triple dose or, you know, or double. Most people like double anyway. Most of the testimonials, especially diabetics, they did double. And then at the end of those seven, eight hours, all I'm getting is this tiny stuff. You know, this is a vascular fraction. They contain the stem cells and we give back to you. Depending on what you are treating, the treatment may be five minutes, it may be additional two hours. So that's how we do the stem cell. The bone marrow is the same too. You know, uh, on my social media, I think there's a post of um, a, a one lady. I mean, she didn't feel anything. Of course, we numb it. Um, we go in, harvest the bone marrow. We process it and then uh, we put it, uh, we transport it to where we need it. So what can be treated? Pretty much any degeneration, not all diseases are degener uh, degenerative disease, but anyway, there's degeneration, regenerative medicine can be used to regenerate that um, tissue. And there's limitations. So it's not the answer to everything, although it is, answer to most things. So now it's making incurable disease to become uh, treatable. You know, remember I don't like using the word kill. Or those of us in regenerative medicine don't like the, saying that. I'm almost then uh, getting to the testimony and we are done. But I just want to point out, if there's a problem with the brain, the spinal cord, or the kidney, unless they are acute, maybe somebody just have a, uh, Kidney function was good last month, and all of a sudden something went wrong, either from medication or infection or whatever, and they have acute kidney failure or acute stroke, or they just have an accident, they become paralyzed. If it is acute, you can get to it with one or two treatments. Otherwise, kidney disease and spinal cord injury, old stroke, they need multiple treatment sessions, and then the patient will have to be patient. You know, in the one of probably the last video, that's a kid that you see, two years old injury. It took nine months to get the right hand to move. It took 12 months to get the left hand to move. And we're doing the treatment every three months. And then it could become really expensive. So please keep that in mind. The, uh, these are just the, some conditions that can be treated. There are so many. Autoimmune disorder, rheumatoid arthritis, uh, Crohn's disease, lupus, autism. Um, people are just uh, fibromyalgia. Multiple sclerosis. Oh, there's a video of a patient treated in November. I'm not showing it here, but it's on our Instagram, you know, for multiple sclerosis. And she's getting a lot of improvement, you know. Um, diabetics, and that's type, type one is mainly autoimmune, but type two could be because of overweight. So you can use stem cell for that. People's blood pressure become controlled. If somebody has stroke and it is acute, one treatment, you know, great result. Cerebral palsy, it can help. You will need more than one treatment. Erectile dysfunction, and you know, if you win, uh, my Caucasian, Patients, they need only one treatment. My African patients, they need up to three. Some people, two. Or if they do one, it takes like six months to eight months to see results, whereas my Caucasian patients within three months. And then uh, we've tried to figure out why. None of the doctors can give an answer. I don't know, maybe our expectation in Africa is higher. For female infertility, 
there are people who have tried uh, IVF the three, four times, it's not successful. They, they try stem cell treatment, other stem cell, boom, you know, there's uh, improvement. Or it, stem cell therapy too can even help the success rate of uh, IVF um, to increase. So there's also uh, hope in that aspect. Arthritis is common. Um, we see some testimonial. Some people want treatment, some people need more than one. Neck pain, back pain, and spinal cord injury. Develop, developmental disorders. Uh, that's a kid from Canada that was six year old, um, brought down, uh, was diagnosed with Dravet syndrome in Canada. Within, uh, I believe, roughly four weeks, the mother is already uh, happy, you know, even trying to, to talk, respond more to the, uh, the name and uh, uh, calling uh, her name. I don't have it in the air, but there's, my point is there are so many, uh, uh, so many testimonies. You know, I've been doing this for many years. Even if you have nothing wrong with you, we are going to die one day. You know, sometimes it helps to rejuvenate um, uh, your memory, your energy, your sleeping pattern. So that's why we use it for anti-aging as well. We've been talking about uh, sexual function enhancement for spouses to preserve marriages so that husband don't worry about the wife or the wife don't worry about the husband, any one of them being enticed to people they shouldn't. So it does preserve marriages, you know. Um, it can restore relationship. All right, so the presentation is over. Right now, I'm just going to see if I can rush over the, I'm sorry, go over the testimonials and then uh, we can go into um, question and answer. This is a kid I would treat with umbilical cord stem cells, son of a, a nine year old boy autistic child, uh, treated in 2019. The father is a orthopedic surgeon in Nigeria. And then within five days, he sent me a text that he's participating more in family uh, activities. And then um, within, uh, let me say, three weeks, he's able to play piano, self-taught. And then by January 14, the same text that he obeys instructions better, he has less tantrum, you know, but he's still repeating words. And then the following month, February 8th, he said that, okay, now he's improving, not when he does repeat the words, but he, he had response. In other words, when you ask him, how are you before, he will repeat to you, how are you? Then by February 8th, the father said, he will, he will now say, how are you? I am fine. So that's an autistic child that was treated with umbilical cord. The first one I told you that I treated on March 25, 2021, we use exosomes, you know, uh, for that, you know. So depending on which one you use, all of them um, will still uh, give you some benefit. This is a patient with um, um, arthritis. You can see bone on bone there on the right side of the of the of the screen, you know. A offered surgery, did not want surgery, came to Nigeria to see if I could put uh, I mean, why well, she came to the US, they offered surgery bone on bone. She said no. She said she wanted to try something else. So we did um fat and PRP for her, and then within 11 days, the pain um level has dropped from seven over 10 on the left to four, and then six over 10 on the right to three, and then five weeks later, it has dropped down to three over 10 and then two over 10. This is a, um, a, a somewhere, I would think, it's a something year old lady, treated also January last year, with 11 years of hip pain, and um, you know, within, uh, she used to say that she went to, I think a property step on something in Africa and then, and then she's been having pain. But we were able to treat her to, um, 11 years later. And then two days after, when I found follow up to see how she's doing, 
She said, I have not experienced any pain since the adult part derives stem cell. And it has really helped me, you know. And so it, the pain does not relapse. I thank God. So, and then the, um, some, I think, a, by, I treated in July, in January, in July 23rd, which will be six months later, the blood sugar has gone down to 96, the fingers blood sugar, and then the blood pressure has gone down to 136 over 80 at that time. So, and then the hemoglobin one c 2 dropped to 6.52. So, um, that's another happy patient. This is a patient that has surgery in the neck, as you can see, was treated with, uh, I believe this was a um, triple dose treatment that he had. Two days later, he said, I feel amazing, you know, no pain, the pain is gone. They started referring his uh, architect, his lawyer. So and they wrote me all this long stuff, craving stuff, depression gone, uh, hair growth, notice, sexual function, memory, all those stuff. And then he said that uh, there's no side effect, he's happy, you know, no headache. So it's good to have a happy um, a patient. But mind you, everyone responds differently. Not everyone will get exactly this kind of result. Some will take longer, some will take repeat sessions. So please keep that in mind. This is somebody who has kidney problem, diabetics, high blood pressure, got double dose of fat. The next day was able to read his uh, newspaper without glasses. The stool improved, the blood pressure became fantastic. After uh, being on dialysis for, after erratic high blood pressure for 15 years. And then by, uh, by five months, the, he said that he has to even skip some of the drugs so that the blood pressure and the sugar does not become too low, as he was recording 90 over 50 for the blood pressure. And then he stopped the uh, blood transfusion, and then the epigene was also stopped. Oh, and then he said his sexual function uh, improved. Um, this is acute stroke, double dose fat. This is one of our federal government uh, minister, of course, I can't tell you the name. And uh, this treatment was done um, in uh, 2018, three years ago. Within two months, the hemoglobin A1C dropped down, but that's not why the patient came to me. The patient came to me because of acute stroke, three weeks old. Within 14 hours, half of the symptom gone. I came back to Nigeria three months later. It feels great. He said he had trouble in Nigeria. This is just to tell you that no, you don't have to do double dose. You can do single dose. All of you will get, will get to your destination. It's just that you know, it takes longer to, uh, you know, when you do single dose, but if it's, um, your wish, you can do double dose, and some people can even do triple dose, you know. Okay, this is a patient that was treated on uh, November 20, last year, 2020. That, um, this is a patient that you can see, in 2019, uh, in July, had a knee replacement in the US. They recommend knee replacement, uh, sorry, hip, hip replacement in the US. For, uh, for both hips, she agreed for only the left side. So last year, January, the right side got worse, but I couldn't, because of COVID, I didn't go to Nigeria until November. So we, we treated her. And that's the, the first time we did bone marrow in combination with fat, in combination with PRP, you know, uh, in Nigeria. I call this kind of procedure Ferrari, you know. I don't have Ferraris, okay? <laughs> so, but I just like to use car because, um, and to compare. You're going with the best, you're going to the fast uh, car, you're going to get there faster than somebody driving, uh, driving to that roller. But all of you get to your destination. So what happened is that the pain that was now about 10, within uh, two days, 48 hours, dropped down to three over 10 in the hip. But now about 10 in the knee drop down to five. So 
three weeks later, the what was what has dropped from number 10 to three, further dropped down to two, and the knee that was five, further dropped down to two. Then 51 days later, yeah, he said everything dropped down to one. And then uh, recently, when I follow up with her, she said she's still regenerating and uh, the pain is still around one, and sometimes less, and occasionally it may be go up to two. Um, but again, the goal of this kind of treatment is 50%, although she's having like 80% reduction. It will not be typical for everybody. Mind you, she did the so-called Ferrari. Uh, so if you just do ordinary blood, you know, you get your 50% by three months to six months. It may not be uh, 48 hours like this lady, okay? There's somebody also that uh, some five year old that could not stand straight. Two days later, can stand straight. And I think this is probably second to the last um, slide and video. I'm going to play it. I will fast forward it because there's a section I want you to see there. She has severe back pain. She cannot walk straight. She, has, she needed a cane and then you see what happened. So then um, later on, she said that she was able to sleep very well. She felt better after the therapy. She was able to walk up uh, upright, you know. Then uh, three days later, I asked her how she was doing. Let's see, I want to pass for that. And then she, uh, she said there's no more pain, you know, from my low back. Just little pain from the right hip. Okay. And then my inability to walk in upright position has improved, but bending has uh, tremendously improved. Now, yes, this is where I want you to watch. Look at that. Look at the angle. Let me go back. You see the angle where she stood up? She, on her own, just took that video and sent it to me three months later from Nigeria. You know, so that is the power of uh, regenerative uh, medicine. Okay, this is the last video, and we're done. Um, this is the kid I was talking about in my introductory video, um, who was playing in secondary school and wrestling. They had his head upside down, smacked it on the floor. So he had emergency decompression surgery done and scar tissue was formed. After that, of course, when the wound healed, I didn't get involved until two years later. So it took time um, to get a result. But remember, like I said, the earlier um, one intervened, the better. So let's see what we hours later, you know, it could, uh, okay, yeah, just a second. So, 24 hours later, it was able to move his hand a little bit. That is what is, uh, is, is shaking in this video here, okay? This, but months after, it took nine months to have the right hand up, 12 months to leave the, uh, uh, the left hand. And then I'm going to fast forward it to, let's see. Okay, as time goes on, he was able to raise the hand above his, uh, his head. The speed at which he was able to move the left hand too increased, you know, you see him there doing better. And then by 15 months, when you turn him, is able to turn himself back. Mind you, this is somebody that was paralyzed from neck down. That is no movement in the shoulder, in the waist. Because in medicine, 
something like this, more than 15 months, they tell us that there's nothing you can do. But as you can see, regenerative medicine says that there may still be hope. The only unfortunate thing in this situation is that the treatment was not uh, sought for within the acute state. Like the federal government minister that had a stroke for three weeks, he had only one treatment, he's looking younger, he's, he, he, that was in his first term in office, he's in the second term in office now, and, uh, energized, and you know everything is great for him. This boy could have been able to walk in less than two years if the treatment was done within six weeks. But unfortunately, that's not the case, you know. So what I'm just trying to say is that um, the earlier, the better. Oh, sorry, I forgot I said um, one more patient. This is a patient with an uh, We treated this patient um, in September 2020, last year. Our uh, patient had a stroke on Sunday, unable to move the uh, right side of the body, unable to speak. When we were contacted for consultation, we went in to treat um, the patient. And then, that was on Friday. On Saturday, the patient started speaking. So, and the, that it happened on uh, September, uh, the treatment was done on September, and level. You can see it, she cannot move the right um, side. Now, the next day, September 12th, you can already see the gradual uh, improvement following a, a, a transplantation of one of our regenerative medicine um, um, procedure. And then I'm going to let you watch this through. So after this, we're done. We can see little movement in the in the leg. Day three, she's already able to uh, move her uh, leg better. Mind you, we still recommended physical therapy. This is one of the physical therapists, um, you know, working with her. Uh, Twenty-four days uh, later, the of course the therapists appreciate the application of regenerative uh, um, medicine because it offers accelerated healing process. And then by 30 days, she's already able to walk without a cane, you know? And then by day uh, 53, you can see her walking is even uh, better. From somebody who could not talk, who could not move the right side of the body, you know? So the body will still going to heal, but regenerative medicine helps him to go back to complete uh, state or restore normal functioning state, which was the definition given of regenerative medicine at the beginning of this presentation. So um, in summary, um, we can use PRP to treat any condition that can, that can be touched, or we use exosomes and uh, other stem cells to treat both what you can touch and what you cannot uh, touch. So I hope um, I've been able to explain to you that this is something that is safe. And again, you have to seek treatment. The earlier, the better. We do not promise cure. You might have seen some things that look like cure. We don't promise cure. Those that have uh, children or family members that have sickle cell disease, we currently do not um, treat that, but we are working on it already so that uh, in, in less than a couple of years, we'll be able to offer that treatment in Nigeria and you don't have to travel uh, to travel outside. So if you, um, that is the end of the presentation. And these are our contacts. Most of you already have it. So if you have any question, please send it in question and answers, and then we will address them.